Hello guys, welcome to Tech Vitals. Today we are going to learn about GPT partition in Linux using gdisk command. GPT partition is the modern technique of partitioning disks in Linux. In the previous video we learned about how to partition disk using fdisk command for MBR partition. But MBR had some limitations that is MBR only supports the hard disks up to 2 terabytes in size. So if our hard disk is more than 2 terabytes then we cannot use MBR. And also using MBR we can only have 4 primary partitions in our disk that is the maximum number of primary partitions we can have is only 4. But in this modern world we might need more than 4 primary partitions in our disks and also to store the big data we may need the hard drives that are more than 2 terabytes of size. So the MBR technique of disk partitioning may not fulfill the needs of the modern requirements. And that's where GPT partition comes into the play. GPT supports hard disks with way larger space and using GPT method we can have up to 128 primary partitions in our disk. That is 32 times more the primary partitions that we can get from the MBR. And that's why GPT method is a very popular method of disk partitioning in Linux. And that's what we are going to learn in this video. And if you watched my previous video, then in that video, I had added 20 GB space in my virtual machine as a virtual hard disk for the GPT partition. So if I go to settings, storage, and in this controller SATA, if I click on this icon that says adds hard disk, then there you can see I have a 20 GB virtual hard disk that is not attached to my virtual machine yet. So I just created this virtual hard disk in my previous video but I didn't attach it because in that video we only did the MBR partition. So if I look here then here I have attached this centos underscore one virtual hard disk and it is for the MBR partition and this virtual hard disk is named centos underscore 2. To attach this virtual hard disk to my virtual machine, I will click on this and click choose and then it will get attached to my virtual machine. So now I can use this virtual hard disk for the GPT partition and in case you don't know how to add this virtual hard disk in your virtual machine, then it's really simple. You just have to click here in controller SATA and then click this icon and then you have to click on create and then hit next next again and then you want to specify the size of your virtual hard disk so you can choose your own size I give 20 GB space for my GPT but you can give uh, like 30 GB if you have more space on your computer and then you have to click create and then if you scroll down then you will see there is a 30 GB virtual hard disk that has not been attached. So I had already attached this CentOS 2 but it is still showing here. So this must be some kind of bug but that's how you create the virtual hard disk. And to use this hard disk in your virtual machine you have to click here and click choose and then it will get attached to your virtual machine. So I have already attached this uh, CentOS underscore 2 virtual disk which is the size of 20 GB so I'm just going to click cancel okay now click OK and start the virtual machine and now I'm going to use my mobile xterm application to connect to my virtual machine Okay, so I'm logged in as a root user, but let me change to a local user. Okay, so now I'm logged in as Paul. If I type which G disk, then I do have this G disk command, but in case you don't have G disk command installed, you might need to type 
sudo yum install zdisk since i already have my zdisk command installed it won't install anything so zdisk already installed okay now if we type sudo fdisk hyphen l and let me give the password now if i scroll up a little bit then this sda is my first hard disk where i installed my virtual machine and these two are the partition of that sda virtual hard disk then this sdb with 20 gb of size this is my mbr partition hard disk which i created in the last video and these are the partitions that we created for that sdb hard disk and this sdb1 is the primary partition with 5 gb of size and this sdb2 is the extended partition with 15 gb of space and from this 15 gb space we created these two logical drives or logical partitions one with the size of 5 gb and another with the size of 10 gb and you can see sdb1 is the primary partition sdb2 is the extended partition and here you can see sdb5 you might be wondering this should be sdb3 right but since this is a logical partition the logical partition always start with the partition number 5 so that's why it is stb5 then stb6 and if we create more logical partition then it will be stb7 stb8 and so on and now this sdc is the hard disk that we just attached to our virtual machine that has the size of 20 gb and you can see for the sda drive we have these two partition sda1 and sda2 for sdb hard disk we also have this four partition stb1 stb2 stb5 and stb6 but for sdc there is no partition like stc1 or stc2 and so on because we haven't created any partitions for this sdc we just attached this virtual hard disk to our virtual machine the size of this hard disk is 20 gb so we can actually create the mbr partition for this virtual hard disk because it is less than two terabytes of size but since this video is about GPT partition, we are going to create GPT partition for this SDC hard disk. So let's clear the screen first. Now to create the GPT partition, we are going to use gdisk command. So we have to type sudo gdisk and the hard disk that we want to create GPT partition for. That is slash dev slash sdc and then hit the enter. Now we have to give the password of this sudo user. Okay, so now it says creating new GPT entries. We can press question mark and press enter. Then it will show us various options that we can choose for the partition. So at first, we want to create a new partition. And to add a new partition, the command is N. So let's press N and press the enter. And as I mentioned earlier, GPT supports 128 primary partitions. So we can have the partition from 1 to 128. So this is our first partition. So we will give it the partition number 1 and press the enter. Now it is asking for the first sector of our hard disk for this primary partition. First sector simply means the starting point of our hard disk. So for the first sector, we can just give the default value that is 2048 so we can either copy paste this value or we can simply press enter to choose the default value so let me press enter and now i have to choose the last sector and you can see the default value is this and if i click enter or if i give this default value for the last sector then this partition will occupy our entire hard disk so our hard disk is the size of 20 gb so if I give the last sector as this default value, then our primary partition, which is the partition number one, will have the size of 20 GB, and then we won't be able to create another partition. So if you want to have just one partition in your hard disk, then you can press enter, but I'm going to give a custom space 
for this first partition and to give custom space we have to type plus and then the size that we want to give it to this partition and here you can see we have k m g t p so these are the sort forms of kilobytes megabytes gigabytes terabytes and so on now the size of our hard disk is 20 gb and for this first partition let's give 5 gb of space so to do that type 5 and then press g for gb or gigabytes now press the enter and now it is asking for the hex code of the partition type the default partition type is this linux file system which has the hex code of 8300 now we can hit enter to have this uh, linux file system type but if you want to change the partition type for this partition then we have to give the different hex code and to see the list of hex codes we can type capital l and press enter you can press enter to see more codes so these are all the partition types in linux and the default partition type is this linux file system with the hex code 8300 the other common partition types are uh, this one linux lvm which is linux logical volume that has the hex code of 8e00 and we also have this linux swap partition that has the hex code of 8200 so let's select this linux swap partition type for our first primary partition so let's give the hex code that is 8200 and press the enter okay so our first primary partition has been changed into linux swap partition if we type p then you can see our first partition has been created with the size 5 gigabytes that has the type of linux swap now let's create one more primary partition press n and hit the enter so this is our second partition so let's give 2 or you can just press the enter for the first sector we can give the default value and for the last sector you can either give the rest of the space to this second partition or you can give the custom space so i'm going to give the custom space so plus let's say 10 gb so plus 10 g press the enter now we have to give the hex code so for the first partition we give the hex code of 8200 for this linux swap partition but uh, for this second partition let's give the default value of this linux file system so let's press the enter okay now if we type p again then our second partition has been created with the size 10 gigabytes so out of 20 gigabytes we have given 5 gigabytes for first partition and 10 gigabytes for second partition now we have 5 gigabytes left so let's create the third partition with the remaining size so again press n now this is the third partition so 3 first sector is going to be default and uh, since i'm going to give the rest of the space to this third partition i can press the enter so that it has the default value as a last sector so press enter now um, let's give the default value or the default hex code for this partition as well okay now if i press p again then we have this third partition with 5 gigabytes so 5 plus 10 plus 5 is 20 gigabytes now we cannot create more partition in this because our hard disk has been full now these partitions has not been created yet this is just the description so if you want to create or if you want to finalize this partition you can press w and press the enter and now it will ask for the confirmation so do you want to proceed yes or no let's say yes and hit the enter and now it says the operation has completed successfully so let's clear the screen first and now if we type sudo gdisk hyphen l and then our hard disk that is slash dave slash sdc and press the enter and after giving the password now you can see for this sdc hard disk 
we have three primary partitions. The first partition with five gigabytes of size with Linux swap partition type. The second partition has 10 gigabytes of size with the type of Linux file system. And the third partition has the remaining five gigabytes of size with the type Linux file system. And that's how we create the GPT partition using Zdisk. If we type fdisk hyphen L and let's give the sudo again. So for the SDA, the LISC label type is DOS. For the SDB, the disk label type is DOS as well. But for the SDC hard disk, the disk label type is GPT. Okay. So now we have both MBR and GPT partition, but we cannot use those partitions at the moment. So before being able to use those partitions, we need to format them and mount them into the system, which we will do in our next video. So that's going to do it for this video. In the next video, we will format and mount our MBR and GPT partition into the system. And I'll see you soon with that video. Till then, keep learning. Goodbye.